Hey y'all, and welcome back to my channel, Raina Taboo. I'm Raina, the owner of T's Accessory Boutique, and today I'm going to show you how to customize your very own Hollywood style vanity. But before we get into all of that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I'm posting new content. Let's get started. So what I'm showing you here is an old desk that I was able to purchase locally on my Facebook marketplace. I paid about $40 for it and it's just really dirty and old and scratched up but I'm going to fix all of those problems with some sanding and cleaning and painting. I'm going to start by removing all of the drawers and emptying all of the paper and whatever is in there into the trash. Then I'm going to clean them and take the knobs off of them so that I can prepare them for sanding and painting. I just wanted to show you that my drawers knobs have Phillips head screws attached to them on the inside so that's what I'll be using a Phillips head screwdriver to remove all of the knobs off of all of the drawers. Once I've successfully removed the knobs from my drawers, which by the way came in two different parts, I didn't know that until I started taking them down, my drawers and my desk are ready to be sanded, wiped, and painted. But before I mess with that, I'm going to go ahead and paint my knobs because those are going to take the longest to dry. And to paint them, I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum Metallic Finish in gold. Now that the knobs are set to dry, it's time for me to work on the desk and the drawers. I'm going to be using my Black & Decker sander. I don't know what grit that sandpaper is, it's just something I already had on there so I didn't pay attention. But all I'm going to do is sand the entire desk and all of the front surfaces of the drawers. Once everything is sanded and wiped down thoroughly, we can go ahead and start the process of painting. I will be using this Bare Marquee Paint and Primer in One in the color Magnet. I got this from the Home Depot like a year ago. I'm using paint that I already had because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on this project. So just make sure if you're using an older paint that you mix it and shake it very well so that you can get the proper color that you want to apply to your furniture. And I will be applying it using a regular dollar paintbrush that I got from Dollar General a while back.
once you've painted everything and it's all dry, it's time to reattach all of the parts. We're going to start by reattaching the knobs to the drawers and then putting the drawers back into the desk. And this is the result of my custom painted vanity desk, which is only the first part of my custom Hollywood style vanity. So I was super inspired by Tokyo Vanity's vanity. This was customized for her by French Angels Vanities. That's their Instagram. Check them out. They have some really dope stuff. But I wanted to make my very own custom vanity with my pictures. So in order to do that, I've provided you with a list of things that I used and all of the measurements of everything that I needed will be in the description box down below. The mirror that I'm using is a 30 inch by 42 inch mirror from Walmart. I will try to find it and link it in the description box below. I honestly do not remember how much this mirror costs. I got it about two years ago and it's been sitting in my garage ever since. So what I wanted to do was repurpose it. I'm going to take the frame off. In order to do that, I have to take all of these brackets and these staples out of the back and this paper backing and all the other good stuff off of the mirror. Once I take this mirror out of this frame, I'm going to then build a custom frame using the 1x4s. This is something that you want to be very careful with. I probably should have had my mirror lying on a blanket or something a little softer than this floor, but when you're taking it out of the frame, what I did was take my flathead screwdriver and kind of push it up under all of the staples that were in the corner to lift the flap up. This made it easy to get into the paper that was under it and to take out the L-shaped bracket that holds the corner pieces together. Once I removed that bracket, I was able to then wedge the flathead screwdriver in between the crack of the corner frame and kind of give it a little twist not too hard and not too fast because it is a mirror and I don't want it to break I just kind of want to get it started with the separation and I will be doing this to all four corners Now I'm going to be taking my Phillips head screwdriver and unscrewing one side of the wire hanger that's attached to the both sides of the frame. That way, this wire hanger will not be the cause of the frame not coming apart. I removed all of the paper and the cardboard backing and now I need to remove the prongs that help hold the mirror in place on the frame. 
Sometimes people use pliers to get these out, but I found that these were fairly easy to just get with my hands. So I pushed it up and then I wiggled it out and they came out just like that. And I'm gonna be doing that around the entire frame wherever there are prongs. And once I've done that, the frame should literally be just coming off. There is a little bit of glue that's attached to it, but it's hardened and it's easy to just peel off. Remember to be super careful and go very slow. There's no rush when you're working with this mirror because you don't want to break it. Once the mirror has been taken out of its frame, it's time to build another custom one. I took the quarter inch plywood and laid it flat and stuck my mirror in the middle, even on all sides, and then drew out where the mirror would lie exactly. Once I've drawn that out, I can go ahead and start building my custom frame with the one by fours around it. And once again, all measurements will be listed in the description box below. I'm going to go ahead and glue my mirror down first because this will give it time to dry longer as I'm working on the other pieces of the mirror. And I will be gluing this mirror down using a heavy duty glue, E6000. I went through two tubes of this stuff. So, I just want you to know you will need a lot of glue and once you've glued it down you kind of want to sit some heavy stuff on top of the mirror but not too heavy to where it could break or chip the glass. Now I'm going to be taking the 1x4 pieces that I had cut at my local Home Depot and I'm going to be putting them on all four sides of the mirror to create the frame. I'm just laying them out first to make sure that all the pieces fit properly and once I find that they fit properly I will then staple all four corners together, flip it over and staple all four corners on the back side as well to create this custom frame. And this is what your stapled frame should look like on both sides. Now that the frame is assembled, I'm ready to paint it. This part is optional. You could leave it this natural color if that's what you're into, or you can paint it any other color. I'm going to be using the same paint 
I used for my desk because I want it to look uniformed. Even though I'm going to be covering the frame in pictures, I'm going to focus on the insides and on the sides of it because I know there are still going to be some gaps in between those pictures and I want the frame to look uniform. Another optional part to this frame is to add the photos. I used regular computer paper and printed out all of these black and white photos. I used 30 pictures in total on what I wanted to put around my frame because I was inspired, like I said, by Tokyo's vanity. So I decided I wanted pictures on my vanity as well. You don't have to do this. You can very well skip this step and go straight to adding your lights but i just wanted to show you how i'm going to lay the pictures onto the frame using the mod podge and a sponge brush I just wanted to show you all what it looked like after a completing one bar on the frame and I wanted to show you like the Mod Podge still isn't dry but I also wanted to make you aware that because it is paper and it is Mod Podge and it is wood that you will have some wrinkles in your pictures but it's nothing that you cannot go back and straighten out with your finger and flatten it out and you're just going to repeat this entire process around your whole frame and I used three coats of Mod Podge for extra protection. And I feel like it gave me the exact illusion I was going for, which is I wanted it to look like a wrap. So I'm pretty happy with the outcome. And now it's time to glue and screw this frame down. Once again, to glue the frame down, I will be using E6000. I will let it dry for a few minutes and then I will flip the frame 
all the way over and I'm going to be screwing in some quarter inch screws. I'm going to do two on each side. So that's eight screws in the back just to give it added security to make sure that the boards are attached and they will not go anywhere. This is how much E6000 I'm using. You really didn't need that much, just the line on each side because you are screwing in the wood together. So the E6000 is also just extra protection. I will leave a link down below of where you can purchase these vanity mirror lights. They are already wired. The cool thing about this is you don't have to mess with any electric work. They come with these extra sticky pads because the way you apply them is by sticky pads that they have attached to the bottom of them. They are plastic, but you cannot really tell they're plastic unless you get like right up on them or you touch them. They really do give off the illusion of like real Hollywood glass lights. They're white LED lights and they come with all of these cords and attachments so that all you have to do is plug it up and turn it on. They are also dimmable and that's another thing that I really love about these lights. So what I'm going to do is unwrap them and get the wires all out the way so that I can go ahead and place them on the mirror where I want and then I will be able to take the sticky part off the bottom and attach them to the mirror. There's an attachment on one of the bulbs that goes into the adapter to plug into the wall. Just make sure you put that on either the bottom right or left corner because you don't want it in the middle of the vanity and you don't want it at the top of the vanity because you don't want your cord to be dangling from all over the place. You'll notice in between each one of the lights, there's some extra dangling clear wire. And I'm just going to pull that wire taut 
and tape it to the back of the frame using this tape that I have on hand, which is electrical tape, but you can use any tape, I'm guessing. And that's gonna pull those wires out of the way for the most part. Here is the attachments that you need to plug it into the wall and light it up. I've attached the dimmer and I've attached the cord. Now I need to attach it to the actual lights and then plug it into the wall. Here I'm just going to show you how it works. By holding down the power button, I can get it to go to its brightest setting, which is almost the equivalent to daylight. It's so bright. I love it. I love that I did not have to do any electrical work. By pressing the button, I can dim them. I can make them bright. This is just perfect for me. Very low maintenance. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell so that you are notified whenever I'm posting new content. I love doing these tutorials and I hope that you love watching them. If you decide you're going to make your own custom Hollywood vanity style mirror, then please tag me on all social medias which will be linked down below in the description box i'm so grateful and so happy that i've gained so much more support since i've started this channel and i only hope to grow with you all until next time thank you